Hi, Abby. How are you doing? Hey, Jamal. Doing great. Digging your shirt. Looks fresh. Thank you. I mean, what a great crop of actors. I mean, I, I, I really adore, I mean, of course I adore the late, late Michael Kay, but uh, but Nicole Buhari and John Boyega and Olivia Washington, who, who Denzel said is the best actor in the Washington household. I mean, you have some, you have a great crop of actors in this. Like, how was it just to work with that that team of uh, talent for this project? Pretty incredible. I, I'm truly blessed. Uh, I'm so glad you brought up Olivia because she's one of my favorite humans. I got a good list of favorite humans from this project, but she's up there. She's a pro and a real gracious spirit. I cannot wait to see what she does next. Yeah, yeah. I got to ask, though, I've been reading up on you and to, to see that you graduated high school at the age of 13. Um, like, how do you think that affected your trajectory to get into the film business and everything else to have had this accelerated uh secondary and, and college education um, and to be in the world like as a really young adult, you know? I got a pretty broad view of the world because I was in it pretty young and I learned grit. That's the biggest thing. I just didn't, don't stop. Yeah, yeah. Um, working with these actors, I'm sure you guys shot uh, during um uh, during the pandemic um how what 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 how did how did you overcome the challenges of being on a set uh and you know having all this great talent and now having to do these different protocols like how was that mixing that into your in your formula of making you know the project happen makes it a lot harder <laughs> to be quite honest you've got so many layers that are there. So psychologically, your job as a director is to say what's on the table for everyone emotionally and how can I use that to get that on screen while making sure everybody's safe and emotionally and physically so that they can go on and, and, and do better things. So we just kept, we use the quarantine protocols to our advantage. John's over here and Nikki and Salinas, they're over here. So you create as much of the space as possible and then woof, they come together when they're on camera and you, you roll and then allow it to happen. So we create an almost theatrical like setting. I also try to keep the crew out as much as possible so that it's just the actors. So they feel those tensions bubbling up in the bank and then it's on camera instead of in the rehearsal space. Look. They're, they're telling me that it's just gonna take a minute to locate the camera equipment we need, but it's coming. Okay. You lie. No, sir. You lying to me right now, I can hear you. No. You lying, I can hear no. it in your voice. You know what, we're gonna wrap this up. No, 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 we're no. We're gonna no. wrap this up. Don't do that. Hey. Wait. My, um. God. Wait, 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 wait. It's all up and all. It's a wait. Brian. What do I need to do to get the attention that I need right now? Right now! Right Brian. now, ma'am! Brian. Brian, calm down. Calm down. Is this what I need to do? No, we're gonna... We're gonna take care this of this. what I need to do? Okay. Okay. Is this what you need? Is this all the motivation you need to get me what I need? You have hostages in here, ma'am. Hostages and they scared. Brian. They scared for their damn lives. Brian. I need a phone call. Brian. You have my undivided attention. I don't need your undivided attention. I need the attention of the VA. Uh, Not you. There's, you know, been some recent legislation about veterans. Um, and I know just being in LA, just seeing, um, you know, the homeless uh, encampments and everything that was, which has a large amount of veterans and and stuff. What, what about that? The story like brought you to like bringing this to 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 the screen. I mean, and telling the story of this veteran who had reached his breaking point. Well, my dad's a vet. He's a a Navy guy, and that line, the Pact Act that you're talking about, my dad's been in that line for a while, and he went from being a athlete to being in a wheelchair throughout the course of my life. And he's waited for a really long time. Oh, wow. Um, so, so definitely uh, personal. Like, does that help you as a director? I'm, I'm guessing it does. I'm answering my own question. Like, when you have 
kind of like those personal pulls of that and and do you have to like pull back at all from you know your personal connection to some stuff to not fog it up or or do you put it all in there you calibrate a little bit it keeps me honest because yeah. i know i know my dad's friends who he was in the navy with um i know his story it keeps me pretty honest um but then you also I talked to Brian's wife, Jessica, and she said, oh, well, Brian was like this, not that. And it's like, OK, well, that that's that's our guidepost. We go there. Yeah. Well, look, I love the I love the picture. I definitely love like, you know, your castmates and, and which, the job you did as a director. So I can't wait to see what else you put on screen. And, um, and thanks for thanks for taking the time. Thank you for uh, speaking to me, Jamal. Really a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.